Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and in this video I want to present the results of the 2020 season of the Ashland Hawkwatch. The Ashland Hawkwatch is located at the Ashland Nature Center near Hokessen, Delaware, which is all the way in northern Delaware in the Piedmont region of the state. And our goal is to spot and identify as many migrating raptors as possible and to record those totals along with information about the weather. The Ashland Hawkwatch is held during fall migration, which is September, October, and November. This year we had a total of 604 hours of observation, and during that time we totaled 12,566 migrating raptors, and we'll go through all of the different species that we see. And that was 98% of the 10 year average. And all of the averages I'm going to use in this presentation are comparing this season to the previous 10 seasons. So 2010 through 2019. During the season, we saw a total of 138 species of birds and we had over 1200 volunteer hours. We have a really great group of volunteers that comes out and they put a lot of hours in helping me to spot and identify birds, to handle the paperwork, and to interact with visitors, as well as filling in on my days off. The summary of the raptors, 10 species were above average and only 4 were below average. We had a new season record for red-shouldered hawks, and merlins and peregrine falcons were both only one less than the season record and we had a new single day record for red-shouldered hawks. So overall, a really good season. If we go through this species, starting with black vultures, we had 774, which was slightly above average, and the high count was 52 on November 2nd. And you can see in the photos, we had a couple of wing-tagged black vultures. The one with the yellow wing tag came from Newark, Delaware, and is four years old. So that one's been hanging around the region for a while. And the one with the red wing tag, I couldn't quite make out what the numbers are, um, but they come from a banding operation in West Virginia. For turkey vultures, we had 4,676, which was more than 250% of the average. So another high year for turkey vultures. The 2019 season was actually significantly higher than the 2020 season, so the past few years we've had high numbers. The high count was 431 on October 27th. And you'll notice throughout this presentation that a lot of high counts were on October 27th. We just had a really good day for migration on that day. Ospreys, we had 211, which was slightly below average. The high count was 31 on September 4th. So ospreys are an early season migrant and we probably miss some of their migration. For bald eagles, we had 615, more than 150% of the average, but it's common at most hawk watches that the number of bald eagles is going up and up and up every year. So this wasn't a record year for us, but definitely a lot of bald eagles around. We see them every day. The high count was 34 on November 2nd, and you can see from the photos that uh, sometimes we see bald eagles fighting in midair, which is always entertaining to see. And by the way, all of the photos in this presentation were ones that I took this season. Northern Harriers had a great season, 190, almost 150% of the average. And the high count was 16 on November 4th, which is only one less than the single day record for Ashland. And the Harrier in the top right there was one during one of the last few days of the season. Really cloudy, miserable day, not much happening. But the Harrier flew in and perched and uh, gave us something to look at on an otherwise slow day. Sharpshinned Hawks, 1,121. Only about two-thirds of the average. The high count was 78 on October 13th. We kept saying to each other at the beginning of the season, where are all the Sharpies at? It, they just had a really slow start to the season and never caught up to where they should be. So the total ended up being a little low. Cooper's Hawks, on the other hand, we had 466, which was above average. 
with a high count of 25 on October 27th. And again, there's that date, October 27th. Normally, we would think of both sharp-shinned hawks and cooper's hawks as peaking more in early to mid-October rather than the end of October. But we just happen to have a day with really good conditions. Red-shouldered hawks. And these totals have asterisks next to both of them because they were both new records. The season total was 758, and the single day total was 110, which beat the previous record by one. And again, it was October 27th. And as far as I know, I think this was the highest total for red shouldered hawks out of any hawk watch this fall. There's a couple of hawk watches that sometimes beat us, um, but we're usually one of the top few in the country for red shoulders and i think this year we had the highest total broad winged hawks only 1808 one third of the average with a peak day of 896 on september 19th so less than 2000 and half of them came on one day um, now 2019 last season was the lowest out of any season here they just missed us completely we only had about 600 some this year, a little bit better, and there were other hawk watches in the region this year that got big numbers, but they just never passed right over for us to count. So the total ended up being low, just because of the path that the hawks took this year. Red-tailed hawks were above average, 1,269, almost 150% of the average, and a high count of 121 on November 2nd. Now the two photos at the bottom, the adult red tail there, is Ash, and many people are familiar with Ash. He is a red-tailed hawk that was rehabilitated and released here at the Ashland Nature Center, and Ash is very tame, so we would be sitting at the hawk watch and he would fly and land in nearby trees, and we could always tell it was him because he is banded. Golden Eagles, we had seven, which is below average and they all came on separate days and all of them were immature except for the last one of the season which was an adult which you see in the photo on the left moving on to the falcons all of the falcon species were above average this season kestrels we had 542 with a high count of 58 on september 18th which is the second highest day ever at ashland the highest day ever is actually over 100. We had a spectacular day during my first season in 2017. But a uh, good season for kestrels overall, which is good because that's a species everyone's always worried about declining. Merlins were also up 85, just one less than the record. And the high count was 6 on September 11th. Peregrine Falcons did excellent, 27 with a high count of five on October 7th. And again, 27 was just one less than the record, and that single day total of five tied the previous record. So uh, definitely the best season I've ever had for peregrines. Usually um, we get around 20, but I think some seasons I've, I've had much less than that. So it was great to have a good year for peregrines. Of course, we don't just see hawks, we see many other kinds of birds as well. And here are some of the ones that stood out this season. If we start at the top left photo, olive sided flycatcher, we had a few times early on in the season. Pine siskin, and there we see a pine siskin being hand fed by one of our volunteers. This was one of the biggest pine siskin eruptions in memory. So uh, we had over a hundred visiting the feeders at the hawk watch and we could hand feed them we would be sitting there and they would land on your head or your shoulder or your spotting scope so during that peak period there was a couple weeks that we were just getting swamped with pine siskins and it was a lot of fun then uh they stayed through the end of the season in small numbers but there was definitely a couple weeks there that was the peak and then they moved on the bottom left photo is a Vesper Sparrow, which is a species I've had a couple times at the Hawk Watch, but one that's easy to miss as well. The top right, Evening Grosbeak, definitely a fun species this year, an eruption year for them. But same thing with the Pine Siskins. There was maybe a week or two that we had a handful of flyby groups, maybe three or four days, and then they were gone. 
So uh, definitely a, a bird I was happy to get from my Ashland list. Black-capped chickadee. Normally here in northern Delaware, we only have Carolina chickadees, but it was an eruption year for black-capped chickadees as well. And we had one that was visiting the feeders at the Hawk Watch, which for me was a little taste of home because I'm from north central Pennsylvania where we only have black-capped chickadees. Next one was the bird of the season, and it came right at the end of the season, one of the last few days. One of the volunteers said, hey, what's this bird in the tree here? And I looked, and I don't know what I expected the bird to be, but I didn't expect to see my lifer painted bunting sitting 20 feet away from me. So that was a, a really good one to pick up. And we saw the bird briefly twice, and then it moved on and wasn't seen again. And the last photo, red crossbill, and this one has another story to go along with it. This one flew over heading south, and I could hear a bird calling, but I couldn't figure out if it was something on the ground or something flying over. And by the time I saw it, it was past. And as I tried to piece it all together in my head, I was pretty sure that that had been a red crossbill, but I wasn't confident enough to actually count it. And so I was really kind of kicking myself that I wasn't able to get photos or to confirm that that's what it was and figured uh, it was gone, it would never come back. Well, a bit of a miracle happened and 15 minutes later I heard the call again and the bird flew back from the direction it had gone and I was able to get the photos and confirm that it was a red cross bill. For me personally, my next stop is Braddock Bay, New York, which is up near Rochester, right up on Lake Ontario. This will be my third season as the counter there. That count runs March, April, and May. And I know it looks like a beautiful place in that photo, but believe me, when I get there at the end of February, it won't be nice and green like that. Maybe the last week of the season, it, it looks beautiful with green grass and leaves on the tree, but most of the season, it's very cold, but the number of birds there is amazing, and I'm looking forward to going back and seeing all my friends, and there's a great birding community up there. I want to say thank you to everyone who helped out this season, especially Joe Sebastiani and the Delaware Nature Society, who let me make Ashland my home and office while I'm here, Sally O'Byrne and the Delaware Ornithological Society, and Jordan and Sam from DENREC. DNS, DOS, and DENREC are the three organizations that come together and collaborate to make the Ashland Hawk Watch project happen. And the Hawk Watch has been run now every year since 2007. So it's a really good collaboration between those agencies. And of course, thank you to all of the Hawk Watch volunteers and visitors who really make up the soul of the Hawk Watch. It's much more than just a simple data collection. It's a whole community that comes together, and uh, we have a lot of good times together up there, so it's a lot of fun to, to be together, especially in 2020. It's been such a crazy year, but it was a little bit of a, a place that people could come together and socialize in a safe way. And that's the end. Thanks one more time to everyone who helped out with the Ashland Hawk Watch in 2020. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.